So now we're going to be talking about the Senate races that are going to decide who controls the U.S. Senate. There's three to watch. All right. Joe Manchin in West Virginia, Democrat incumbent. Sherrod Brown, incumbent, Democrat in Ohio. Then you got John Tester, incumbent, Democrat, Montana. These three guys have a couple things in common. They are perceived as moderates. They are all in red states. They've all voted for Trump, both in 2016 and in 2020. The states have, not the yeah, senators. The states have. Now, these are the Republicans' prime opportunities to pick off and take away from the Democrats to get the Senate. Democrats only have one flippable opportunity, and it's Texas. So that goes to show you how bad the Senate map is for Democrats right now. Yeah. It comes down to these three guys. So I think I want to do a little lay of the land, and I want to look at these three Senate races. Who are the Republican nominees most likely to be? What's going on in the Republican primaries to get these spots, to challenge these incumbents? And then who's likely to win at the end of the day? Because um, this is going to control, this is going to decide the control of the Senate. So it's important that we know going forward, you know, the state of the races. So let's start in West Virginia. We've heard a lot of stories about Joe Manchin. He is the moderate's moderate. Our, his status as a Democrat is arguable. Yeah. I mean, he has flirted with going independent for a long time. Yeah. He's flirted with running for a third party for president. Yeah. I, I mean, currently flirting with it very much could do it. A lot of people in West Virginia want him to run third party president. That sounds surprising. A lot of Republicans want him to in West Virginia. Yeah. Like a lot of people think in West Virginia really like this guy. I must say, I think it makes sense having learned a little bit about Appalachia Mm -hmm. recently. um, They and West Virginia, like they voted Democrat for so, so long um, and only really over the past 20 years have stopped voting Democrat. Um because democratic policies generally are the ones that are supposed to be supporting those people who are left out on the fringes a little bit more and they need the the maybe government support a little bit more uh the the reason that they've shifted republican is because the idea of the coastal elites kind of frowning down upon them right it's the coastal elite problem that democrats just cannot get past but Mm -hmm. joe manchin has successfully been able to skate that line Mm -hmm. he was a popular governor of west virginia turned senator and you know now he is rocking a pretty high approval rating right now his approval rating in the state is 51 percent disapproval at 34 if you're an incumbent and you're above 50 percent approval that's a good spot to be. Yeah. It's notable that his approval dropped after the passage of the Inflation Reduction Act and the passage of the American Rescue Plan mm. um, because that's him siding with Joe Biden. Sure. Right? Um, but now, since he has been in the news very adamant of maybe rescinding some of the IRA money, mm-hmm. trying to take money back, trying to fight against climate change or the opposite, right? Trying to stop the administration to fight climate change. Yeah. It's more popular for the people in west virginia who rely on coal as their main economic opportunity Mm -hmm. so joe manchin is popular who is his opponent most likely going to be it's one or it's one of these two people jim justice and alex mooney Uh, jim justice is the current governor of west virginia used to be a democrat and is a fairly moderate republican at the end of the day he is not um a hardcore austerity guy Mm. who wants to cut all government programs it's just not him he's a culture warrior right but he's not the type of guy who wants to cut wick it's not him um then he's going up against alex mooney alex mooney is a hardcore culture maga republican exactly he is the maga republican in the race Mm -hmm. and the maga republicans are aligning and following up behind alex mooney Mm mm-hmm and this is the state that I think voted by voted for Donald Trump more than any other state in the country. So you would think this would be a MAGA country state where a MAGA guy is going to get the nomination, but that's not how it's looking. Jim Justice, the popular governor, is leading Alex Mooney in the primary 58 to 26 percent with only 16 percent undecided. So it, it's looking like Jim Justice is going to be able to take it from this guy, mm-hmm. um, which is bad news for Joe Manchin. In a head-to-head race between Jim Justice and Joe Manchin, Jim Justice is expected to get 51% of the vote, and Joe Manchin is expected to get 38% of the vote with 11% undecided. Jim Justice already being up over 50% is really bad for Joe Manchin as an incumbent who has an over 50% approval rating. That's really bad. Yeah. 
I mean, of course, this is still early polling, um, but it makes a lot of sense that there would be a lot of popular support for the more moderate Republican. Yeah, and, he, race, and he's a right? popular governor. Yeah. The way that he handled COVID was very popular in the state. Um, he actually did a really good vaccination distribution in West hmm. Virginia, like one of the best early on in the country. Okay. He did a really good job. So now, but here's the opposite. If the Republicans were to nominate Alex Mooney, we have Joe Manchin at 45%, Alex Mooney at 41%, with 15% undecided. Mm. So Joe Manchin has a better opportunity of winning if he is able to go up against uh, Mooney, right? Yeah. And this creates a hard dynamic for Democrats here. Um, It's going to be really hard to beat a popular governor. Yeah. And Joe Manchin is said to be dead on arrival. The only way he's not is if Republicans mess it up and nominate the wrong guy. Mm -hmm. But don't put it past them because they've done it plenty of other times in plenty of other races, right? They they nominated Dr. Oz in the in the Pennsylvania Senate when they shouldn't have. Yep. They nominated Herschel Walker in Georgia when they shouldn't have. Mm -hmm. They nominated Blake Masters in Arizona when they shouldn't have. They don't have a good track record of picking winners. I think Jim Justice is just such a popular current governor that he's not going to have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. But this is still something to watch, and I don't think Joe Manchin is totally dead yet. Um, people have called him dead for a long time. A lot of people didn't expect him to win in 2018, and he did. He yeah. won by 3 4%, which is crazy. Yeah. A West Virginia state voting for Trump by 30-something points ends up voting for a Democratic uh, senator two years later yeah well that's that's why my my reaction really to all polling is always like it looks like this but you really you really don't know right it, this is all about like the snapshot and it, it yeah. kind of shows like the the main thing that i like to look for in these polls is what's the approval rating of the incumbent yeah right? yeah that's the thing it's it's hard to think of these like these 51 people 51 percent that are approving of joe manchin not voting for him to stay in office. Right. Because he's the one who's had the office, who has done the job that you are approving of. And so you're saying, oh, no, I want to take a risk and go to someone else who's doing a job that I that I don't know how they will inhabit. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Um, so Joe Manchin, not dead on arrival yet, but it's going to be an uphill battle for him, obviously. So let's go down to – let's go west over to Ohio where we have Sherrod Brown. I'm going to be uh, completely honest here. Sherrod Brown is one of my favorite senators. He's the chairman of the banking committee. He's very big on banking um, regulation. He's worked with J.D. Vance, the other senator from Ohio, for some railway safety legislation that probably won't get through the Senate because of Republican backlash. But he is working with his other Republican counterpart in Ohio. Um He's also fairly close with Elizabeth Warren, who is also involved in a lot of banking and Wall Street regulation. So that's like his lane. He's the union guy who's taken on the banks. That's mm -hmm. always been his lane. And that's popular in Ohio. He does not really play the cultural games. He is focused on the economic, mm -hmm. right? He's a union guy. Um, so how is the race looking? Well, he is facing off against three possible Republican opponents. Um, Matt Dolan. Frank LaRose, and Bernie Moreno. Um, I don't really know anything about Matt Dolan, so I'm, I don't really know enough to comment on him. But I do know enough about Frank LaRose and Bernie Moreno, who I think are the guys to watch. So Bernie Moreno is a big Trump guy, massive supporter of Donald Trump. Donald Trump has mulled over endorsing Bernie Moreno, which if Donald Trump does endorse one of these three guys, they will be the nominee. If Donald Trump throw his, throws his hat in the ring... Ohio is Trump country, they will follow up behind. Hmm. And they, the Republican Party of Ohio will follow Trump's endorsement. Okay. Um, Frank LaRose, so Bernie Moreno, businessman, Trump guy. Frank LaRose, also Trump guy, current Secretary of State of Ohio. He was really big in pushing for that referendum that we just talked about in August. Okay. He was the main advocate for voting yes on Amendment 1. Okay. That was his main thing, and he failed there. Mm -hmm. not good press for him he went on fox news they kind of roasted him for it he was like we did well and then the 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 hosts were like well you didn't do that well i mean you still lost yeah. and then he was like stuttering his way um so how does the race look well we have matt dolan at 14 percent, frank larose at 19 percent, bernie moreno at nine percent that bernie number is going to go up when trump gets his hat in the ring and i don't think bernie's going to go below dolan and then we have undecided 56 percent 
this race is so up in the air. So you think Trump is going to endorse Moreno rather than LaRose because LaRose is getting bad press right now? Yeah. I think Moreno is like – I think Moreno has been sucking up to Trump for like a year now mm. that I think that Trump feels that loyalty. I see. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean this is – that is the political game. That's the political game. And he wants someone who's going to be all in on his corner and Bernie has shown – that he is all in on Trump's corner. Okay. Uh, Moreno, Bernie Moreno has said some other very controversial things. He has suggested that white people deserve reparations for ending slavery. Um, like the, 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 like a reward. Yeah. Like the descendants of white wow. union soldiers should get reparations for ending slavery. Holy rather sh- than like the black people who were descendant of the slaves. Wow. So he has suggested stuff like that. So not a cool guy, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> I don't know how else to cover that. That's just how it is. Um, So let's go. Let's look at some of the polling against Brown versus some of these guys. So the approval ratings I've seen for Brown hover around 47, 48%. Also pretty good. Fairly good. Again, I told you he's a union guy and that plays really well in Ohio. Mm -hmm. He's not over the 50, which scares me, but he's at it. You know, he's around in that margin of error. So recent polling out of... Uh, from early July, this is the most recent polling we have. So this is uh, as best as we could do to cover the race. We have Brown at 48 and uh, Bernie Moreno at 41. So Brown leads, Ber- leads Bernie Moreno by 7%. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then we have Brown versus Frank LaRose. Tied. Both at 45. 10% undecided. Then we have Brown versus Dolan. Brown 46. Dolan 43. Brown up 3. Mm. So... This is, again, one of those situations where it's very obvious that LaRose is the best bet at the Republicans winning. Mm. But if they mess around and they nominate a guy like Moreno who said some controversial stuff like that, it's just not going to play well. Yeah. You know? And Same it's, story, kind it, of. It, and that's what I want to talk about. Basically, all three of these Senate races, it's the exact same story. Yeah. This is the struggle of statewide sure. high struggle politics. And this is the story since, since really since 2016. Like, yeah. This has been the story every election season. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, it's interesting that these guys, you know, Sherrod Brown gets into office for the first time in 2006, which is um, a Democratic wave year, like a massive Democratic wave anti-Bush year. And Sherrod Brown comes in. The next time he's on the ballot is 2012, um, Obama wins re-election, right? So he's getting he's getting pulled over the line by a Democratic wave in 2006. Mm-hmm. He's getting pulled over the line by Obama running for re-election. He's getting pulled over the line in 2018 with the massive Democratic wave that was the 2018 elections. 2024, I don't think, is that blue wave. No. This is the first time I think he's going into an election where it's a neutral environment. I mean, maybe that's not the case if it's Biden versus Trump. Yeah, that's true. That's true, right? We'll if it's Biden versus Trump, then it's a little different because I... The Democrats feel the same way they just did about Trump. Right. Yeah, they're exactly. just as worried. Exactly. So that's the Sherrod Brown race. Now let's kick it over to Montana. We got John Tester. Uh, John Tester is just a hell of a guy. He is a Democratic senator from Montana... Actually, the exact same story as Sherrod Brown gets into office in 2006, carried mm. over the line in 2016, wins in 2018. Same story as Sherrod Brown. So mm. um, it's kind of like this is the last bastion of the moderate Democrat senator in the Interesting. office. Interesting. Right? Okay. That's who these people are. Um, John Tester's a farmer. He was also, I think he was a machinist for a little while, or or I just know that he has lost three of his fingers. So he, his hand looks like this. <laughs> he doesn't have three fingers on yep, one of his hands yep. uh which god that's that's great for politics that's man. what i'm saying that's an man. amazing story yeah and he ha- he like comes in on a lot of his parades riding a motorcycle using the clutch with only two fingers on his right hand yeah you know? i'm seeing a picture of it that just looks perfect yeah yeah like like you want this plastered on the front page of a newspaper like that's a man's man right there missing three fingers yeah. you know what i mean yeah like he's done work and on his twitter page he's so funny he posts videos of him farming and oh, like yeah. him cultivating all of his crops and giving updates about the weather, you know, like he. That's awesome. Yeah, he, yeah, he's in it. He's in it, man. He's great. He's like, I just finished up harvesting for the season. Time to go back to Washington. And it's like, <laughs> oh man, like that's cool. That's so cool. I yeah. love that. It, it's all a political stunt, but I just love it, you know. <laughs> um, and so John Tester, how is he approved of? 
Well, John Tester has a net favorable of 47 and then an unfavorable of 46. Mm. What I see here is he is the most divisive out of the three. Okay. Joe Manchin being at 41, uh, 51, excuse me, and then only not liked by like 35% of Republicans or something. Same thing with Sherrod Brown. His disapproval is only in the 30s. Mm -hmm. John Testers is in the high 40s at 46, mid 40s. That's unfortunate. But again, his approval is still 47, so the race isn't dead. Sure. When 47% of a deep red state is approving you. Yeah. You're not dead in arrival. No, definitely not. And so who is he going to be going against? Well, in the lead is this guy main, m named Matt Rosendale uh, and then Tim Sheehy. These are the two Republicans running against John Tester. So in the Republican primary, Matt Rosendale is sitting at 55%. And then Tim Sheehy, he is sitting at 19%. Matt Rosendale is the current at-large uh, U.S. House representative for Montana. Okay, He is a hardcore MAGA was very big on the election being stolen, was one of the people leading the charge to decertify the election. Hmm. That is his reputation nationally, okay. and it's his reputation in the state. Tim Sheehy is a businessman, kind of from out of state, fairly moderate, more think more think a little more Mitt Romney type, um, and he's a veteran. So Mitch McConnell um, is trying to push for Tim Sheehy to become the nominee okay. to better their chances. Okay. When we look at the approval of these candidates, Matt Rosendale, um, let's see if I can pull that up here. I think I have it, don't I? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Okay. Bottom left here. Tom, it's okay. Matt Rosendale, he has a net favorable of 45, unfavorable 43. So he's less popular than Tester. Mm -hmm. Then we have Tim Sheehy. He is a not known quantity, quality here. Yeah. People don't know him. Um, 24% haven't even heard about him. And 19% of people have no opinion about him. So his approval is irrelevant yeah. at the moment. Like, people just don't even know who he is, um, which is a fairly good place to be if you're trying to run as a moderate. It doesn't mean you have a lot of ground to gain. Yes. Right. You have, you, have a lot of, you, you, you have a lot of stuff to make up for, but you're a blank slate. Yeah. And being a blank slate in politics is rare, and it's really beneficial. Yeah. I'm, I've been thinking about that with Vivek. Ramaswamy, right? To to not have any mistakes that you've made in office to need to defend, um, that is super advantageous. No, definitely. And I, I saw that when I when I ran for office in Brookline, it was because I was this blank slate new young guy. Yeah. Everyone wanted to get to know me. Everyone wanted to support me because they were excited to not just see someone new involved. Sure. They were excited to sink like how can we loop you into what we want? Yes, sure, definitely. You you can be imprinted upon. And also, you can only be measured, you can only be judged based on your ideas rather than the actual execution of so them. So true. Right? And it is so much easier to speak idealistically um, and in, like with inspiration mm -hmm. rather than being like, oh, no, we can do this because there are other people that are in government that blocked us and made it harder, right? Like, you don't have to worry about any of that. This is interesting because let's think about let's, – let's go rewind Republican debate. You have Vivek Ramaswamy going off about these idealistic causes of de, 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 uh, you know, destroying the executive state. Thank you. Destroying the administrative state. Then you have Chris Christie on the other end of the stage who's like, I was a Republican in a Democratic state, and these are the things I did to balance the budget and make compromise, right? Mm -hmm. Two totally different types of – of politics yeah and chris christie talking like vivek ramaswamy would look ridiculous because you could just say like hey man you were in office already and you didn't do that exactly exactly but vivek is able to run basically as if congress doesn't exist yeah, that's exactly right yeah that's exactly right um so we got on a tangent there about vivek dude this guy ben is so obsessed with vivek he had a dream about him last <laughs> night he had a dream that he got high with vivek and then walked <laughs> around trader joe's with him yeah I did do that. You did. I did have that dream. Um, <laughs> Dude, I wish I knew what you were talking about. Do you remember any of it? Uh, I don't remember that Damn. much of it. No, no. Damn. I. But what it's I just because give. he's on like every fourth YouTube thumbnail that I scroll so past. True. Yeah. God, your YouTube algorithm is broken. <laughs> you know, it's it so is. cursed. Yeah. Okay. So where is the race standing with John Tester versus these guys? So um, against Matt Rosendale, John Tester is sitting at 46 uh, percent john tester is sitting at 43 percent against uh tim sheehy tim sheehy is sitting at 46 percent john tester at 42 um 
uh, Matt Rosendale does a little worse, not noticeably, in the margin of error. Basically, yeah. they do exactly the same. Mm-hmm. Um, John Tester is in trouble. John Tester and Joe Manchin are in trouble. I am more bullish on Sherrod Brown winning. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, caveat here, Ohio's polling history has been the worst out of any other state in the entire country. Okay. Yeah, they have they have thought that Biden would win Ohio. They have actually had the most abysmal record in polling accuracy. Interesting. Um, I've compared some of the polling of 2020 to the one that I cited previously, and they are sampling more Republicans in this poll than they were in 2020. Like percentage-wise? Yeah. Okay. So they might be learning, but okay. I'm still not convinced that the political scientists and statisticians running the polls in Ohio know what they're doing yet because they've literally been wrong so frequently over the years. Mm. It's really been bad. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, polls are just polls are just polls. They're polls not are votes. Just, polls. So. just keep in mind that we want to focus really on the the favorability numbers. Yeah, which is why I feel like Tester. Like, I'm I'm not as bearish on Tester. He's still at a what forty six percent, forty seven forty seven percent that favorable. That's not that bad. No, it's really not. No, it's really not. 